You're listening to the Look Right Naked podcast. I'm your host, Eric Bach. This is the podcast for men and women who want to look right naked without living in the gym. If that sounds like you, then you're in the right place. Let's dive in. Hey, what is going on? It is Eric Bach, your host of the Look Great Naked podcast. And today, we're going to build off a recent podcast that had a ton of attention, and that is on body recomposition. You see, recently, last week, we covered body recomposition and the five biggest training mistakes that most people are making that are preventing them from building lean muscle and losing body fat. And so today, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the diet side of things. We're going to talk about why your diet isn't working, why it can seem like you're doing all the right things, but not necessarily getting the results that you should. Before we do, training camp in the NFL, it's going on. We got preseason, right? And so it's really interesting about the beginning of a football season is you go through what we call a suck period. There's a time period where everything just sucks. And my good friend, former military drill instructor Cameron Bryant, always said, listen, there is always a huge suck factor when you go through basic training. You just have to get over it. And the same thing when it comes to football. Two days, that shit sucks. I don't even know if they do two days anymore. But man, even up in Wisconsin where it wasn't you know 110 degrees like it is down here in South Carolina with the heat index, brutal, right? And there's a weeding out process in the very beginning of every physical endeavor. There's the hump that you have to get over. Um, Bedros Koulian likes to term this takeoff velocity when it refers to business. Anytime that there's a business, let's say a plane takes off at 150 miles per hour. Well, if you get to 149, it doesn't matter. You don't have the capacity to lift off, right? But 150, then you can lift off, then hit autopilot. Same thing. You have to get through two days in training camp to make it into the games. You have to get through basic training to make it into combat. And when it comes to losing fat and building lean muscle, you have to get over the initial suck factor and the desire and endless need for motivation and just get shit done. I think a lot of people go out there and really wanna transform their body and they're like, I need motivation, I need this, I need that. Oh my God, this is hard. Of course it's hard. It's supposed to be fucking hard, right? And while I empathize it, you know, circumstances, jobs, stress, kids, all this stuff can make it difficult. You ultimately have to suck it up and just get the job done, right? And body recomposition is something where the process is slower than just building muscle by itself or losing fat by itself. And when I talk to people consistently throughout the day on social media, on calls, the vast majority of people say, yeah, I want to build muscle and lose fat. Well, you have to understand that the expectation is you're going to have to grind for the first little bit to really find your footing to maximize the training and the nutrition and all these qualities there, right? So we have to have that expectation set forth before jumping into any goal. Now, let's talk specifically about recomposition, the holy grail of losing body fat and building lean muscle. Now, there are a couple of mistakes that people make on a regular basis that absolutely crush the hard work that they are putting in. And that's exactly what we are going to cover, right? So let's kick it off. Mistake number one is weekly inconsistency. So what the heck do I mean by that? All right, so I want you to take a second and think. Give yourself a grade for your nutrition. Every day is either an A or an F. Were you dialed in? Were you not? Monday, A or F. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right, now physical activity. This could be this could be walking on off days plus your training. Did you hit all the workouts that you had designed for the week or no? Okay, and now sleep. Okay, now stress management and now lifestyle. Like, were you drinking? Were you partying? Were you just fucking around? Like, what's going on there? And so when I take my clients through this, a lot of times people be like, yeah, I was really good five out of seven days of the last week. I got my sleep. I got my nutrition. I got my workouts. I got these things done. And I say, awesome. Now, in school, what is five divided by seven? It's a 71%. That's a C minus, right? And while I'm not belittling people for having sustainability and having a lifestyle and, and all these all these things, listen, I like to enjoy myself too. Right? I'm no different, right? But we can't have the expectation of A-level results if we are putting forth C minus level execution. And this is the biggest issue that people have, right? Because many people want to have world-class results when it comes to their health, when it comes to their body, but they're not quite willing and ready to make the sacrifices that are necessary to make it happen. And that's completely okay. But when expectations are out of alignment with our action steps, that incongruence erodes our motivation. It erodes our self-belief. And so what I focus on as a coach is not chasing perfection, right? Unless you're trying to be a professional athlete, unless you're a high-level coach who's looking to master everything that you can do and teach those lessons to your clients, 
unless you are trying to step on stage. And again, I have some of these clients, but if that's not you, you don't have to be perfect. But what you do have to do is tailor your expectations accordingly. If you know that you're not going to negotiate off that Friday date night or having ice cream with your three-year-old, like I like to do, right? Like throughout the week, right? And have a good time. Well, we have to have these expectations in our mind and what we're willing to sacrifice in order to truly meet what our goals are. And so while you might not have to be perfect seven out of seven days, if you do want better results, you probably got to move that up from three days to four, four days to five, five days to six, and six days to seven. So give yourself that report card. Where can you improve? Where are your gaps? And simply improve by making one of those days in one of those areas a little bit better. And that itself is going to help you make better overall progress when it comes to losing body fat and building lean muscle. All right, number two, the fear of getting too fat or too skinny. And guys, apologies if my, if my uh, voice is just a little bit nasally here. We got this palm tree is in full bloom. And I swear, every time I walk outside, like I did 10 minutes ago, my nose is set off for like 10 to 15 minutes. So I guess I got to create a buffer period between that. But anyway, that notwithstanding, fear of getting too fat or too skinny. So here's the battle, right? Recomposition is the goal of trying to build some lean muscle and building or and losing body fat. So we have to make some adjustments to our nutrition, which we will get to shortly. Now, flashback to Eric. If we're looking at me when I was uh, when I was 14, I was five foot three, 102 pounds. I believe that's what it was in a football program. And I was a target. Gang, I was the last person to grow on my football team and it sucked, right? Um, so I was small. I lacked confidence. I was a target on the field. I remember one practice actually, uh, was special teams. I was the last person available to make a tackle. The guy returning the kickoff could have ran outran me. I did not have an angle and he put his foot down, dropped his shoulder and decided to run through me because apparently at that point, Eric provided less resistance than a blade of grass. Right. And it was like that impetus that got me in the gym of feeling so fucking pathetic in that moment is like what got me to really commit to my training at that point. And fortunately, you know, once, um, you know, once I hit puberty, body took off and all that stuff, I had a really good work ethic and decent genetics where, hey, I was able to be strong, fast and all that stuff. But ultimately, I always hated being skinny. I hated being that small guy. I hated the way that it made me feel. I hated the way that it made me feel like a victim, like I wasn't in control of my body. And so for me, a battle pretty much over now at 34, but like I didn't want to get too skinny whenever I would cut down. Like it was this fear of getting too skinny because I didn't want to go back to Eric 1.0. Those same feelings of inadequacy to being the little guy, to to all those other feelings that it brings out. And I've talked to you know other people who feel the same way. And then on the flip side, people who as soon as they add calories to their diet and they want to build muscle, well, because maybe they struggled with their weight for a long time, they have this fear of gaining body fat. And just that little extra body fat that comes on when they're trying to bulk up or that additional number on the scale can really create some mental warfare between the ears, right? And so it's definitely not easy. And and, you know, many times people have mental scars based on body composition and based on, you know, the goals of things that they've accomplished and overcome in the past. But what we have to keep in mind here is we have to trust the process and we can't sacrifice what we want in the future for the way that we're feeling now. Because there's a point, and this happens in recomposition, happens in building muscle and losing body fat, that, for example, when you're losing body fat, you enter this stage where your muscles are flat, you haven't quite leaned out yet. And you just look like a skinnier fat version of yourself. You're like, oh my God, this isn't working. I need to change. But the only way to actually get shredded is to push past that point of discomfort. And when it comes to building lean muscle, very similar. When you're building lean muscle, you're going to have to gain some body fat. But the thing that's important to understand is fat that is more quickly to come on should come off a little bit more quickly as well. And you need to be able to push yourself past those mental barriers and keep your eye on what the prize is to ultimately have that recomposition effect. Otherwise, what happens for most people, they never understand how to get past this point and they waffle between the same basic physique, the same two or three pounds, despite working their ass off in the gym, eating a great diet, supposedly, taking care of their sleep, taking care of their recovery. And pretty soon, five, 10 years later, they're like, what the hell happened? I worked my ass off and nothing really changed. All right. What we need to understand is we have to trust the process, especially, especially with recomposition, because the recomposition process is much slower than losing body fat or building muscle exclusively. And if you operate from the mindset of I can't get any body fat, I can't get any skinnier, whatever it is and have that battle without understanding there's going to be trade-offs, then you're never going to have that long-term view and the consistency to radically change your body. Right, so that's a crucial perspective to be able to understand until you overcome that fear and accept the trade-offs that do come with changing your body, you're going to limit yourself. Now let's dig into a few specifics when it comes to a recomposition diet, because mistake number three is having a calorie deficit that is too aggressive. All right, so let's take a step back. First, I filmed an in-depth video directly on the YouTube channel covering the recomposition diet plan. I break down everything that you need in order to 
build your own diet recomposition plan to lose body fat and build lean muscle. I go down for what you need to be doing on a daily basis in terms of calorie intake and how to cycle your calories. So make sure you do check that out. But what we need to understand here is when we're in a recomposition diet, effectively what we're going to be doing is following a calorie restricted diet. So we're going to be in a slight calorie deficit with time periods where we need to optimize our our timing directly with carbohydrates and protein and a few days where calories are a little bit higher right? Because we need to support some muscle growth. And so what we need to understand here is your calorie deficit cannot be too aggressive. The more aggressive your calorie deficit is, even on any fat loss diet, it's not necessarily going to lead to more fat loss. It might for two to three weeks, but after that, it's going to plateau. You're going to start to lose more lean muscle. And pretty soon, then you're really going to plateau and have nowhere to go because calories are already low, right? And what we need to understand here is the maximum calorie deficit your body can really stick with for four to six weeks and that's if you are keeping protein high and you're, and you're still training, is going to be about 30%, right? Anything more than that is going to be way too aggressive. Uh, but what we need to understand here you know, across the board is if we cut calories too hard, it's going to be overly stressful on our body. If it's overly stressful on our body, it can potentially increase cortisol, body's primary stress hormone. When cortisol goes up, guess what else happens? Thyroid function can go down. We deal with what we call adaptive thermogenesis. Our body burns off fewer calories at rest and during exercise. There can also be negative implications when it comes to your testosterone levels, when it comes to um, insulin sensitivity, and obviously mood, cravings, all of that stuff can be thrown in the fucking washing machine, span around and left, leaving you to fend for yourself, right? Like that's not ideal either. So your calorie deficit can't be ultra aggressive to the point where it leads to lack of motivation and potentially self-sabotaging like behaviors. And so for most people, here's exactly what I find works best. Now, here's a quick study that I want to pull up and just highlight for you, right? This is in 2011, and researchers at the Norwegian School of Sports Science conducted a study of recomposition with 24 elite male and female athletes lifting weights four days per week and focusing either on losing fat slowly or quickly based on the calorie deficit. And so those who lost weight slowly maintained a moderate 500 calorie deficit. So definitely practical, sustainable for a lot of people. Those who aim to lose fat quickly maintained an 800 calorie deficit, so an extra 300 calories. And here's what they found out. On an average, the slow weight loss group lost about 0.7% of their body weight per week. And the fast weight loss group lost about 1% of their body weight per week. So higher calorie deficit, a little bit more fat loss. Well, here's where it starts to get exciting, my friends. The slow weight loss group decreased their body fat overall by 8% and increase the overall muscle mass by 2%. So by optimizing timing, protein intake, so on and so forth, they actually increased their muscle mass while losing body fat. The fast fat loss group did not fare quite as well. They reduced their body fat by only 4% and actually end up losing some lean muscle mass. And so what this study indicates is something that we've seen time and time again. I've seen this many times over my 15 year coaching career is if you want to recomp your body, you're better off a lot of times with a smaller calorie deficit than pulling the floor out from underneath you where you end up losing a bunch of muscle at the same time, right? Because when we start to lose lean muscle, metabolic function starts to go down. Performance goes down. Motivation goes down. The higher the calorie deficit, the more stressful it is on your body, both from a physiological sense and from a mental sense, where it becomes much more difficult to stick with it. And so when it comes to recomposition, we have to understand that we cannot just pull the floor out and expect to lose fat and build muscle. We want to have a moderate calorie deficit, give or take 500 calories is a great spot to be. We want to keep protein upwards about one gram per pound of body weight, and then a good balance of carbohydrates and protein and fats. But here's where it gets tricky. We don't just want to stick the same calorie deficit day in, day out if we want to maximize body recomposition. And that's mistake number four, sticking with the same calorie deficit day in and day out. So when your goal is to lose fat and build muscle, it's best to rotate through calorie intake. You can do this in a couple different ways. Option number one is carb cycling. So carb cycling, essentially what you do is you have more carbohydrates than the days that you're weight training. Reason being, Muscles act like a sponge. Every time you have that muscular contraction, it's going to be really powerful at grabbing, you know, glucose, all the nutrients that are going through your blood, pulling it directly into your muscles, storing it as glycogen, which can support future activity and driving muscle growth. And because your body is going to be more sensitive to carbohydrates on days that you're training, well, cool. You're going to be able to build more lean muscle without necessarily gaining body fat, right? So carb cycling is a simple option. Essentially what you would do there. Imagine eating, you know, a slight calorie deficit of say 300 calories 
on the days where you are resistance training while having starchy carbohydrates directly after workout could be white rice, potatoes, so on and so forth. And on the days where you're not weight training, then you're pushing maybe that 500 calorie deficit by simply removing the starchy carbohydrates and focusing more on lean proteins, vegetables, and some fruit. That's a very simple way of thinking about it. Now, one way that I've had incredible results with my clients when it comes to that recomposition process is to rotate through what we call an adapted 5-2 diet. So a 5-2 diet in you know some popular circles is you have five days of eating regularly and then two days where your calories are very low. That's not the way that we're going to run this. Like If you do fat loss, that's one way to try it. And in fact, I have a 5-2 diet book that I give away for all my clients. If you guys want a copy of it, just drop me a message over on Instagram and say, Eric, can I have your 5-2 diet book? I'll hook you up. Anyway, that's Bach Performance at Instagram.com, by the way. So here's what I like to do. Five days during the week, you're going to be at a calorie deficit. Push this a little bit higher, 800, sometimes even as much as 1,000, right? And this is where it's going to be a little bit fun, a little bit tricky, okay? So on these days, the five days that we're doing are going to be every day but the two leg days that we're training, right? So if you listen to our last podcast where we talked specifically about recomposition training, you're going to be doing an upper lower training split. And so your training day was going to be Monday upper body, Tuesday lower body, Wednesday cardio, Thursday upper body, Friday lower body, Saturday cardio, Sunday off. So Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, you're going to eat that calorie deficit. So let's say you need 2,800 calories to maintain. You're going to be 1,800 calories on those days. However, on your two leg days, we're actually going to bump calories up a little bit, quite a bit. So instead, let's say if your calorie baseline was 2,800 calories, you're going to be eating a two to 400 calorie surplus on those leg training days. Reason being, your legs, lower body days, those are going to create the biggest overall muscle building response in your entire body, the biggest muscles in your body, and they're going to need the most fuel to recover. So if those days, you can have a bit more balance. You can have 3,000 to 3,200 calories. Overall, throughout the week, this still balances out to give or take that five to 800 calorie overall deficit that we'd be looking for. But when we do it with a 5-2 cyclical style of dieting, here's what this allows for most people. A lot of people really struggle sticking with a diet protocol if every single day is the same. The reason is it doesn't allow a lot of freedom or flexibility for everything else in their life, right? Like if you know that even if you have a diet that says you have to be at a deficit of 500 calories, but Saturday comes around and every Saturday you end up going out, you end up overeating, you end up having something go on, then flow with it, right? Like a big thing that we coach is fitness should improve your life, not consume it, particularly nutrition. And what this can do is this can still average out that calorie deficit that we're looking at and optimize the timing and those things that we need in order to build muscle and lose fat. But by creating a buffer, by being a little bit more aggressive on a few days and then building that buffer so we can have higher calorie days, that allows you to have more freedom, more flexibility, better recovery on our hardest training days, and that flexible lifestyle to be able to enjoy life to the fullest, have a social life have big meals with your family, whatever it is that you like to do in addition to looking great naked and continue to make progress, right? So how do you set this up? Five days at a deficit of 800 to 1,000 calories, two days of a calorie surplus of two to 400 calories. Um, you just want to tie those two days directly into the ones where A, you're training your lower body and B, where you're going to be more likely to have maybe a social event or something with your family where you're going to be consuming more food. If you do it that way, it's going to average out. It's going to be strong. It's going to be very helpful in preventing any potential adaptive thermogenesis or hormonal downregulation that can happen with a prolonged deficit and provide the calories that you need to build muscle on the days when the biggest muscle building trigger is present. Mistake number five, having too few carbohydrates. Man, I can't wait for like this carnivore keto bullshit like time period to be over, um, to be honest, right? So eating too few carbohydrates holds a lot of people back from really optimizing their body composition. Um, I see a lot of people think that like they'll see a peaking diet from something like a bodybuilder or somebody doing a weight cut, looking to lose body fat really quickly, and think that's what people do to maximally lose body fat and keep it off. It's not the case. Heck, even in our coaching program, we do something called the insulin reboot protocol, where short term, it is a calorie carbohydrate restricted diet. However, consistently reducing carbohydrate intake and keeping it incredibly low and training hard in the way that we coach people in the way that you really should to maximize body composition is not going to be ideal, right? If you look at people with the best physiques in the world, they're not eating these high fat, ultra low carbohydrate diets. The vast majority are having carbohydrates be 40 plus percent of the calories that they're having on a regular basis. And the reason being is 
Carbohydrates are the fuel for high performance training. They are absolutely going to be the best fuel possible. And you get a lot of these, you know, like keto zealots and whatnot who are going to say things like, well, you don't need carbohydrates. You don't need this for training. Your body can break down fat. It can even break down muscle, which nobody wants. Well, you know what? Like I can walk from LA to New York, but it's a lot faster to fly. I'm going to take a plane ticket. And that's kind of what it's like trying to build muscle and optimize body composition just doing something like keto. I'm not saying it doesn't have its uses, but it's not optimal. And especially for body composition or recomposition. And when we're looking at these ultra low carb diets, remember the goal here is to build lean muscle strategically while also losing body fat. Well, when we don't have carbohydrates, we lower mTOR, which is more or less the anabolic signal to build lean muscle. And when this happens, we reduce the effectiveness of our weight training. In addition, having carbs directly after your training is going to jumpstart the recovery process and help buffer cortisol, which is elevated. Your primary stress from cortisol is elevated after hard training. And without carbohydrates, we're compromising recovery. In addition, our body likes to use those carbohydrates to generate high force, high velocity muscular contractions. And so when we have carbohydrates that are getting pumped back into our body post-workout, we're storing those carbohydrates because our body knows that it needs to generate this fuel for the next time that we go out into that workout. And when we do that, we can gradually improve that workout quality. And as you know, the quality of your workouts plays a huge role in the body that you have. So if we can support optimal exercise quality for transforming your body by providing the right fuel at the right time, that's going to help you train harder and look great naked. Absolutely crucial. And it's got to remember, right? A big goal of recomposition is alternating periods of fat loss and muscle growth. And it becomes more important specifically if recomposition is the goal to optimize some of the more specific nuances regarding workout nutrition. And more specifically, that means carbohydrates in and around your workout to both provide immediate fuel for that training session to help optimize mTOR, to buffer cortisol, and to refuel those muscle glycogen stores so you can get back to the point where you are getting stronger, building lean muscle, and having these benefits that you want. So what does this look like in terms of a diet structure? So a couple things. I like to keep protein at give or take one gram per pound of body weight. So if you're 200 pounds, awesome, 200 grams. If you're 180, 180. This is a very simple way to do it. One, this can be a little bit more protein than most people necessarily need. The optimal number is really like 0.82 grams per, per pound of body weight. So you can run that math on your own. But the thing is, it's very difficult for your body to store excess protein as body fat. So if you have a little bit more and it keeps you full and that helps you stay at a calorie deficit, then going a little bit higher, such as one gram per pound of body weight in terms of protein is going to be a great call. When it comes to carbohydrates, I'm looking for anywhere from 30 to 50% of your calories coming directly there. And then the rest would be 20, 30% would be fats, right? We want to take fats below 20% that can compromise overall hormonal function, which we obviously do not want, but too much fat. These high fat diets, unless you're tracking everything meticulously, can be really easy to overconsume calories, which completely knock you out of the ballpark when it comes to being able to have a recomposition, right? So it's this fine balance. Carbohydrates, I generally have a little bit higher the leaner that somebody is, right? So if you're already pretty lean, happy with where your physique is, you can handle more carbohydrates. Maybe going as high as 50% is going to help you actually recomp a little bit faster. This is one of those nuanced things that I do specifically with my clients, and it becomes very highly individual. So if you want to learn exactly how to recomp, how to build muscle and lose body fat, like so many of our clients have in the past, all you got to do is head to bachperformance.com backslash call. We'll hop on a short call, see if you're the right fit and get you started. Now, those are the five biggest mistakes, but here's a bonus one. And it's this no days off mentality that I see so often. Listen, I respect your desire to grind, to get in the gym, to work hard, to push. These are all incredibly powerful traits that frankly, a lot of people seem to lack these days. But what you have to remember this is every time you train, you are digging a hole right? And the only way that your body improves and recovers is if we fill that hole back up with a proper recovery process. That means actively reducing stress and getting your nutrition dialed in. And when we're looking at recomposition, it's important to understand that dieting itself, when you're in a calorie deficit, is also a stressor. And so without proper recovery, without getting your carbohydrate replenishment, glycogen replenishment, with having too much stress, not enough sleep, adding more training and bullshit, the overall stress of the world, well, you can end up working really hard and doing a lot of great things, but not getting the results 
that you should. And mentally, when you're pushing hard and not taking days off, you can have systemic fatigue, which actually can decrease neurotransmitter levels in your brain. It can lower the response to adrenaline. You can have less motivation. And fatigue can mean less force production, meaning less productive training. You can have more cortisol release, which makes it harder to build muscle and lose body fat. You can have less muscle protein synthesis and poor glycogen replenishment. So while grinding and wanting to go harder every single day and pushing harder in the gym to get faster results is novel, I respect the hell out of that ability to grind and the desire to, but it doesn't always serve you. It's crucial to remember in recomposition, like anything else, it's that you have to recover in order to make progress from all the hard work that you were putting in. Training is not just throwing shit against the wall and working hard and hoping it all works. It's about finding the right balance between your training, your nutrition, and your recovery. Or as I like to say, it's about synergy. It's about synergy between your nutrition, your training, and your lifestyle. You can do really well in two of these areas, but if all three aren't working together, your results are never going to be optimized. And that's exactly where most people tend to fall apart. So bottom line, listen, recomposition is definitely possible, but we have to do things a little bit differently. We have to understand that the process is going to be slower than just trying to build muscle or lose body fat. However, if you cycle your calories correctly, if you get the right amount of carbohydrates and protein, if you are getting in alignment with the type of training that you're doing and making sure that it's optimized for changing your body, not just lifting heavy, if you are focused on getting good quality food inside of your body, and if you are proactively managing fatigue and stress, then you're doing the right things in order to look great naked without living in the gym. Gang, that's a wrap. Hopefully you found a lot of benefit directly from this episode. If you could, do me a favor. If you're checking this out on YouTube, let me know what your favorite tip was from this episode. And if you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, hey, do me a favor, drop me a five-star review, hit subscribe because your feedback and your subscriptions is how exactly we keep this podcast rolling for free, giving you top world-class information to help you look great naked without living in the gym. Until next week, train hard. And remember, success comes from the ruthless execution of the basics. I'm out. Hey, it's Eric here again. Now, there are three ways that I can help you look great naked. Number one, if you want to grab a free copy of the Look Great Naked Protocol to help you lose body fat without counting calories, then go to bachperformance.com backslash free training. Number two, if you're a busy guy looking to build muscle, then I recommend checking out our Minimalist Muscle Blitz, which has helped over 1,000 men build muscle without living in the gym. Just go to minimalistmuscleblitz.com. The link will also be available in the show notes. Or number three, and last, if you want to work with me directly and get the best results possible, apply at bachperformance.com backslash coaching to look great naked without living in the gym. Until next time, my friend.